East action coming off a series split against Holy Cross. Just want to get your thoughts heading into the one game matchup against Boston University Friday. Yeah, well, it's certainly going to be exciting. Uh, they're the number three team in the country. Uh, you know, it's on Nesson on a primetime game. And, uh, you know, I think Boston University is as well balanced a team as we have in our league. There's really no holes. They're, they've got excellent goaltending in Quran. Uh, the defensive core is very, very talented. Uh, you know, they've replaced Lane Hudson with his brother Cole Hudson, who looks very similar. They have, uh, and I think one of the best lines in college hockey with Green Hudson and uh, Le- uh, Quinn Hudson and Shane Lachance. I mean, they have everything you want in a line. They have, you know, Green's a, a center who can play, make, and score goals. Uh, Lachance is your prototypical power forward, and Quinn Hudson is a sniper. So they, they that line has everything. And then on top of it, they've got a lot of depth up there with, you know, they brought in Matt Capone from uh, Merrimack. They've got Jack Hughes. They've, they've got a lot of pieces up front as well. So there's not many holes uh, in the Terriers, so we're going to have to be really good to uh, be successful Friday night. Awesome. All right. We'll open it up for questions. As always, if you guys just want to do the the emoji and we'll get us started. Go ahead, Dan. How, with all the new guys that you have with the transfers and the freshmen, how do you prepare them for, for what Hockey East play is going to be like on Friday night compared to going up against Colgate and Holy Cross? Um, I, I you know, I, I think that that's a good question, Dan. I just think you got to put your feet into the fire. And and they've played a lot of hockey. These kids, it's not like they've, uh, you know, played in small town hockey and they've only played in front of 50 people in their life. They're, a lot of them have come from junior leagues or where there's big, big crowds and, you know, exciting games. And I think this is just going to be, another one of those games that they play in. It'll be, I think it's their homecoming weekend. So there'll be a lot of energy in the building and I think it's going to be exciting. I think it's a great way to start the hockey season. Is it when you're trying to work on special teams, is it a lot easier to tweak something on the penalty kill um, by just watching video as opposed to maybe needing some more time on the ice to work on things with the power play? I think it's a combination of both. I think that you can uh, learn a lot through video. Uh, certainly, you know, there's a lot of kids who are visual learners, and I think that's uh, th- that works with a lot of our players. Uh, however, you also have to get on the ice and you have to see it and try to replicate what BU is going to do. It's it's not easy, but uh, we have to replicate. Uh, how they're going to kill penalties and how they're going to attack us on their power play. Then what'd you like from Mike Murtag in his debut? I thought he gave us uh, a really good effort. I really did. I thought he competed hard. Uh, he was good on the four check. He did some good things defensively and, and brought some jump to that line. Then uh, anyway, we'll see Callum or Hugh Larkin this weekend. Uh, Callum, no, but, uh, we're, we're hoping we'll know a little bit more with Hugh Larkin. He did skate yesterday and we'll know a little bit more after today's practice. Is Callum week to week? Is it a longer term thing? Uh, I say right now it's week to week. Thanks. Mm-hmm. All right, Jim, we'll pop over to you. Hi, Cav. Uh, Hi. yep. I'm unmuted. Uh, good to see you. It's been a while. Um, yeah, how are you doing? doing well. Just wanted to ask about uh, Jake and just you know, kid with seven goals a year ago gets gets four already this year. Uh, just kind of what has developed in his game. Um, I just think like anything else, Jim. It's uh, maturity. It's feeling a lot more comfortable in the system. Uh, 
lot more comfortable in his surroundings. Uh, you see that a lot with, you know, a, a lot of sophomores. Uh, they have, I remember, you know, Nathan Gerby and uh, Cam Atkinson had single digit goals as freshmen and, you know, jumped to 25 or 30 their, their sophomore years. And that'd be great if uh, Jake Richard could do that as well. But uh, it happens a lot. I think the freshman year, there's a lot, obviously, new things that you're not used to, uh, new systems and academic curriculum. And now when you kind of become very, very comfortable, um, you know, it's much easier to play. Is there a maturity too, Mike, that goes along with it? Yeah, no question about it. Uh, I think there's a maturity of understanding, hey, this works for me and this doesn't work for me. And uh play into your strengths i think that's that's the biggest thing you know when when guys really mature they they play to their strengths and understand uh their weaknesses and what to stay away from as a player thanks mike yep eric we'll jump over to you hey cav how are you i'm uh, great yourself sorry i'm a video list here i'm just driving in the car to a doctor i couldn't move um just a couple for me. First of all, are there any guys who have stood out to you that haven't necessarily cracked the score sheet yet, but um, you've been really impressed with how they've played so far? Um, I would say the one is Ethan Whitcomb. I mean, uh, you know, the first weekend, 17 of our 20 guys got on the score sheet. Uh, so we had a lot of balance that first weekend. I don't know if Ethan Whitcomb's got on the score sheet yet, but he's doing a great job centering Muldowney and Richard. He's doing a pretty good job on draws, uh, an area with that. He, he didn't play a lot of center in, in juniors. So uh, we think that he has the ability to be a, a great center up the middle. He has, he's doing a nice job on the power play and, uh, as I said, he, he has the ability to make plays and also score. So he was a guy that, you know, was back-to-back 50-point scorer in the USHL, which usually translates uh, at the collegiate level for sure. So he's a guy that we've been very, very happy with who uh, I don't think I don't think he's got a point yet. I should have rephrased that to uh, guys who maybe don't jump off the score sheet because you're right, you guys have scored a lot. Um on that front, statistically, it's obviously early in the season, so it's a small sample size, but been one of the best teams five on five in the country so far, especially among those who have played more than a game. What have you liked about the you guys have played five on five so far? I missed a bit of your, you, you kind of cut out there, but I, I so, correct me if I'm wrong. The gist of your question is why have we been such a good five on five team? Yep. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. I think that's uh, a byproduct of a lot of things. I think one, I have a group that is pretty diligent and they've been able to grasp the concepts of how we want to play pretty quickly uh, two, you know, in order to be a good five on five team, I think you have to be connected in the offensive zone, the neutral zone and the defensive zone, because, uh, if you're not, if you have guys on different pages, then you're going to have weaknesses and you're going to have holes that teams will exploit. And I think we've been playing fairly connected in all three zones, uh, which is which has helped. Uh, it's allowed us to create offense in the offensive zone. It's allowed us to eliminate, you know, teams' odd man rushes or transition through the neutral zone. And defensively, we've been when you're playing connected, uh, you're able to get out of your zone pretty quick. And then conversely, what have you seen out of your power play so far? Uh, I thought it's interesting because the power play numbers aren't great, but you know, the last game, I think we had 13 shots on net in the power play. We just didn't score. Um, so 
I've been, I, I still, it's, I think it's still early for our power play. I still think that they're learning uh, each other's tendencies, but I have been encouraged that we were, you know, creating a lot of chances. I thought Friday night at Holy Cross, we lost too many face-offs and had to go back and break the puck out too often. However, I, I thought we were better on that on Saturday and our chances, we, we created some good chances. We just didn't score. And then my last question was just what you've seen and liked at a tie so far in goal. Well, he's pretty consistent. He, he's been very consistent. He's controlled rebounds. Uh, he's calm back there. And, uh, you know, he, he didn't have a lot of work on Saturday, but, you know, towards the end when they pulled the goalie, he made a fabulous save six on five to keep it a one goal game. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Sure. Got anything else for coach guys? Oh, this is an easy week for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'll get my hand back up here. Go ahead, Jim, go ahead. Um, just want to, you know, maybe get into a little bit of what the beginning of the season's felt like for you. And did practices, have you liked the practices? Do you like the way this team is starting to gel? I, I guess I just kind of want to hear more what you think about what this beginning's been like. Yeah, it's interesting, Jim. I've touched on this a little bit with some people. It's, you know, back when I first started, or it was probably 20 years ago, I think, when they changed. I know exactly when it was. It was like roughly 20 years ago when they changed the rule that you could start September 15th. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think it was September 15th first. It was the first time you could get on the ice. In the old days, you couldn't get on until October 1st. Right. And that was uh, that was kind of nice for coaches and players, I thought, because it gave us a chance to go out and recruit. September is such a busy recruiting month that allowed you to go out and recruit and see some players and also let your players get adjusted to uh, the new surroundings and – academics and everything else uh but the flip side of that was sometimes you had a week before you were playing your first game you know so or your first exhibition game and then uh i know it was like around 08 uh they changed it i think to september 1st or somewhere around there because i remember my daughter being born on september 14th and, and i was like oh man uh we have practice but uh Long and short of it, Jim, is I, I think it's been beneficial for us to have the four hours a week. We start usually the Tuesday or Wednesday after Labor Day, and it allows us to get 20 practices in before we play our first game. So I never feel like we're going into our first game uh, unprepared, whereas I remember in 2002, uh, the year after we won uh, – national title at bc we had lost eight seniors and then kalanos kobasu and uh orpic three first rounders so we're bringing in 11 freshmen and we played literally five days after the first practice uh up in vermont and it was just you know it was like okay let's see what we got here you know but you never felt prepared that's for sure it, it took a few weeks to get prepared so I think the changes have been good in some ways. I miss uh, not being able to have that first month, you know, to recruit really. It's hard to recruit when you're trying to run practice and go see games. And uh, But overall, I think it's been a nice change for college hockey. And I believe that it allows you to feel a lot more prepared when you're playing your first game. That's for sure. Yeah. 